This is NDTV and you're watching NDTV Prime. Welcome. Innovation isn't always about uh, searching for a new idea or, or even thinking, to use a cliche, out of the box. It's often, in fact, more often than not about doing something differently. To quote someone, it's about the leap from idea to execution. And that's what we're looking at today. Innovators are young innovators and ideas and execution that could perhaps change the India story. Let me introduce my panel with a few more people than we usually have, but the more the merrier they say and not for nothing. So let's get started right away. Uh, Vidhi Jain, uh, she's doing research in computer science engineering and uh, is is involved with student technical associations. Basically, to cut a long story short, uh, innovation is something that you worked with uh, closely and are sort of have are buzzing with ideas on how you can come up with the next big thing. Uh, also with us, uh, Kushagra Srivastava, he's the CEO and co-founder of Chakra Innovation. They've managed to prove that you can create ink out of pollution. Uh, I did think that that was absolutely fascinating. Sabesh Kar, uh, Hyperloop, Frugal Engineering, Transport Infrastructure, crowdsourced engineering and the list, list goes on. You are of course also from uh, Pitts Pilani. Joining us uh, from Bengaluru is Nitesh Kumar Jangi, co-founder at uh, uh, a company that is making uh, neonatal breathing support devices, the companies uh, based out of Bengaluru. Hitat Patel, uh, who is the, the person behind a braille in enabled wrist watch and cell phone for those who have visual challenges and also from uh, Mumbai Rishikesh Mungi executive director at Abiruchi Probiotics they are making uh, a probiotic formulation for better management of cholesterol levels mm. all of you uh, thanks so much for taking our time to be with us today and welcome to the program let me start by asking you Kushagra how do you define innovation in your words, what is innovative about what you've done and what is the next level that you would like to take what you're doing to? So uh, for me and my team, innovation is going out there and doing something, one, that is useful, hmm. second, which earlier seemed impossible. Hmm. So if these two things are combined together, that you make something impossible into possible hmm. and that is useful for the society at large. Hmm. We term that as innovation. Nitesh, you know, as, as someone who is helping all those young, little babies and their family perhaps get a better shot at life with this neonatal breathing support device that you're working with, how did you zero in on what you wanted to do and how much sort of blood, sweat and tears did it take to get you to where you are today? We start by using a scientific method we we uh, go into the healthcare system we spend two 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 to three months over there and then find out the problems in that specific area and then rank them and we select the top problems to solve them mm -hmm. and this was one of our top problem to mm -hmm. help babies uh, babies breathing especially while transferring them from rural areas to a neonatal ice 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 right Right. And it's been two years for us now. We are uh, we have our final design ready, which is uh, in next two months is going into the clinical trials, and we are hoping that we would be able to save these babies. Rishikesh, how do you see this space really in the country with all those youngsters who are now out there trying yeah. to make their mark? But also importantly, the message that's coming out is in some way want to make a difference, no matter however small it might be. But far from insignificant really important changes albeit small to the India story yeah uh, true what uh, we see from here is like uh, what was thought at uh, National Chemical Laboratory like mm. there is a uh, saying written on our laboratory uh, this entrance which says that research of this lab should be used for beneficial of the people so we when we started our research at NCL we thought of tackling the major problems which are affecting uh, this as other speakers also have mentioned about this, ki each and everyone is looking at innovation mm. which can be given to masses, mm. where people can get benefited. I, 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 see exactly. the, I see the point that you're making, but both Vidhi and Subesh, you're from Pits Pilani. You hear all these stories, many of them I would imagine most encouraging and you know you want to follow in their footsteps. How do you believe that you can make a real difference? 
So, the currently we face a lot of problems at the grassroots levels and with Spilani being in a village surrounding we get to see the real challenges that people face. Mm -hmm. So, it is a remote place and you do not have better healthcare facilities mm -hmm. there. So, I worked upon an idea of uh, automated psychiatrist wherein we use the mobile uh, devices to get the information about symptomatic psycho so, uh, psychological disorders. I see. So, using that um, symptomatic analysis, we can further help them in the pre preliminary diagnosis of mm. the psychological disorders that mm. they have. Right. Because I think that is one another area that large parts of the country tend to not, I mean, take very seriously. With that, of course, question marks on whether India recognizes problems with mental health anyway. And you're seeing, of course, the point that you're making uh, in rural India. What about you, Sabesh? Yeah. So I, I, for the last one year, I've been involved in this project called mm -hmm. the Hyperloop, mm -hmm. which is essentially uh, 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 an idea which was floated by tech magnet Elon Musk in 2013. Mm -hmm. And the Hyperloop is essentially it short circuits the relation between energy and velocity. Mm -hmm. It basically says that applying low energy you can travel at very high speeds mm. and uh, we, I've been sort of working on this thing for the last year so we were one of the few fully funded teams from India which made it to the SpaceX Hyperloop pod design weekend in Texas this January and the Hyperloop sort of aims to be the fifth mode of transport so cars, trains, I see. cycles, I see. Uh, uh, cars, trains, ships, mm -hmm. uh, boats and it, it promises to be the fifth mode of transport mm. and one of the things that, have, that we've tried to do mm. is that India has a sort of huge logistics infrastructure uh, deficit mm. in the sense that our infrastructure is sort of a legacy of the colonial rule. Mm. Uh, it was meant for uh, transporting, uh, architect uh, uh, transporting agriculture raw material mm. and troops and what we have sort of tried to do is sort of adapt, adapt, uh, look at these problems and look at how something like the Hyperloop, mm. uh, what the Hyperloop essentially is, is evacuated tube transport which is basically uh, you remove the air out of the picture, you, you have a tube, you remove the air out of the picture. And you have pods which are very different from trains, so I they are see. not linked to each other. And you have these pods travel at huge speeds. And why they can travel at huge speeds is because they don't have to extend a lot of energy mm -hmm. into removing air from the front of the vehicle. I see. So, and they also use magnetic levitation, which removes friction. So basically, we are disinventing the wheel. Mm. And what the Hyperloop stands for right now is sort of a global revolution, mm -hmm. which sort of asks for a dramatic change in the transport infrastructure all around the world. Mm. So it promises speeds of 1,200 kilometers per hour. Wow. Okay. And yeah, so so we are at 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 and why the student community needs to be involved in this mm. is because students have the time, the will, and the potential to actually get involved in technological projects like this, which right. promise to shape the world in a in a dynamic way. Because if you look right. at transportation. And I also Any think that our students have the ability to think far ahead. Exactly, exactly. Sort of they don't have a lot of things to lose. Ahead they don't or a couple of exactly. decades ahead. But I want to ask all of you, to you first, uh, Kushagar, you know, when you started doing what you do, did you have to sort of explain what you're doing to people? Were people, you know, honestly like, what are you doing? Like, what is the idea? Because, you know, there are a lot of people who come on the program and say that when they started out, that took a lot. The yes. convincing that I believe in what I'm doing, I have to give it a chance. Because in India, we're so obsessed about failure and stumbling. But yeah. Was that your experience as well? Absolutely. So, um, the kick for the whole team, mm. so it was three of us who started it. Mm. It came when Delhi was tagged as the most polluted city in the world. Mm. And there's a uh, research which was published which says that half of the 44 lakh kids in, in uh, Delhi mm. are growing up with irreversible lung damage. And mm. I was uh, uh, born and brought up in Delhi and that was extremely shocking for me. So, that is when we started iterating that uh, how can we solve this problem of air pollution. And initially, of course, we faced a lot of resistance in terms of um, if this is possible, why was uh, this not done, done earlier? earlier. Yes, typical, typical, typical question. Typical, that typical someone question. would have done it. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Even there are no new ideas left yes, so, to come um, up with. In right. fact, some of the elders even went to the extent of telling us since this has not been done before. It means it's it cannot not, be done. Yes, absolutely. It so, done. it's not Agar possible. Hai, to matlab ho sakta hai. Yes, so yes. don't waste your time. Haan. Possibly pick up some research studies and right. something and try iterating on that. Uh, right. Hitharth, was that your experience as well? Because that tends to happen a lot. There are enough naysayers along the way. And the point Kushagra is making is that, you know, they, they often say that if it hasn't been done so far, then that perhaps is enough proof that it cannot be done. So how do you sort of go uh, about convincing all of them around you? And is it important to get everyone on board? Yeah, it was not so uh, convincing for me. Actually, we got motivated from a newspaper article from Bangalore which stated that a blind person loses a cell phone and he goes to nearby police station to launch FIR. Mm -hmm. 
but uh, the policeman on duty denies to do so and he shouts on the blind person that if you are blind then why are you using cell phone mm. such technologies are not meant for you mm. so this made us to think like in this age of technology where people are talking about 3Gs and 4G right now mm. uh, what blind people they have been neglected and there is no part of technology for them mm. so we visited their workshop and we found like people having various problems associated with their current cell phones they are not able to read messages they are not able to know what is their battery percentage and various other problems right. and we we discussed Very those problems, problems with them and we don't even yeah, sort of would, would never even think twice about not being able to figure out how much your battery is charged the point that you're making that that's really quite an insight yeah so we talked to them about the problems and we told that uh, we would be able to solve them in our engineering and technological field and they were so happy that if someone can really do this while testing also they were very happy that they are now able to read sms they are able to know where exactly they are their families are able to know what is their current location sure. And they are a bit independent for traveling and moving here and there. Absolutely, part we of sort the of perhaps, like I said, overlook these small things, but they can really be game changers for so many people. There's something else that I want to ask you, Nitesh, and, and that's about the fact, you know, that you you come from Belgaum, you come from a smaller town in Karnataka. Yeah. How's the journey yeah. been for you? Because there are so many of India's young entrepreneurs, men and women, who are not in our big cities but have perhaps big ideas. Many of them could just be, you, you know, could really change the story for us. Yeah, sure, sure. Uh, like um, I was, I had a job in Mindtree <laughs> with a package of around three to four lakhs. Mm. And I got a job in core also from Unichem. Mm. So I had two offers, but thought of doing something uh, really into the core, getting something that I would be interested into, mm. uh, doing something in research. Mm. So that was my motive. So I rejected all this and settled for a salary of 8,000 rupees. Mm. And mm. during this point uh, of my project also, in two and a half years, I was not paid for one and a half year. Right. So during this, my parents also helped me a lot during this process. Mm. So uh, people from small town, what I would like to say is uh, there are challenges out there. Mm. It's just that you should always say, agar fail hua to kya hua? Usse, uh, usse kuch nahi hoga. Exactly. I'm just going to fail. There is nothing right. more, thing, uh, right. more than that. Right. That's the only thing uh, what I kept in my mind. I said like I keep, kept on trying. I had an uh, ICT seat, uh, ICT Bombay. I had an MTech seat also mm. during my NCL uh, research journey. But I thought like in the end after doing MTech, PhD, everything, I want to do this. Why not now? Right. So that was a mindset uh, in my initial days. Like I want to do something business and uh, biotechnology. Uh, if you look at the overall branch also, that's not been appreciated. That really is in quite India, inspiring. So. Both how yeah, you sort of yeah. let high-paying jobs or well-paying jobs by the side and sort of decided that you wanted to pursue your passion. Sibesh, are you listening? Are you sort of ready for the long haul? Uh, yeah, so what, basically what I, I would like to add is that when I started off on this, my sort of, I, I hadn't, I didn't have very clear defined end goals. Oh, I want to uh, trans like revolutionize transport. Yeah. My sort of immediate goal was I want I just wanted to meet Elon Musk because it was sort of a it was sort of immediate that's quite impetus. Candid, yes. Yeah, that's what sort of started it off. That sort of, sort of seemed like a cool thing to do. Right. And when I started Have you met off, him so far? yeah, I did. I did. Oh, fantastic. So yeah, so uh, so when I when I when I started off, I I couldn't really understand what what this whole it was very, it's a very complex sure. system. Sure. So uh, so the words of sort of Elon Musk sort of uh, out of always resonate with me uh, is you should never give up. Uh, in the face of adversity mm. and you should do th if, if something is important enough mm. you should do it even when the odds are in your favor not in your favor right. so when i started off i was uh, just a single single person and i was really interested in this technology mm. and uh, what what i saw was uh, india india there's a huge huge uh, transport deficit mm. as i described before mm. and this would this was my way as a part of the student community right. to get sure. involved in something like this sure so. and of course make a difference meet elon musk al al <laughs> along the way i mean yeah. what harm can <laughs> come of that nitesh i'm going to get you in at this stage you know at the point that sebesh is making that the student stage perhaps you have very less to lose is that perhaps why so many people start so young there are all those innovators there are all those companies that are now starting increasingly on campus would you agree that that's happening because the point that he's making is there's so little to lose you've got everything in front of you your life's ahead of you so what if you stumble um, yeah which, that, that's uh, true even same case case with me also mm. so e even when, when, I, when I started uh, my, fam my, my family was there they, they told that why are you leaving your high paying job to start these companies to 
uh, save these babies but I, I told just give me four to five years mm. I don't want to get married just now <laughs> and I, I will do <laughs> That's uh, a great story. Uh, and it's somehow it's I had confidence in me that I, I will do it. Story. We have all been there, done that. So yes, go for it. And more power to you and others like you. Sorry to interrupt, but carry on. Yeah, that I that I clearly told them because I come from Marwari families. From all of my cousins, they are married at 21 and have few of them have three kids. And uh, <laughs> and my family always, whenever I go home, they tell me, Do, uh -huh. "When are you getting married?" Uh -huh. I stop going home. I said, "You guys come here. I will not come there." <laughs> come there an anymore, but yeah, it's it's really helped because we have really less responsibilities. Nobody, nobody. So even if we fail, we always have like do. I will go back to college, or I will study more, or I I will even become a teacher. So I I always had a, a plan B to survive. Mm -hmm.